Jacob and the ladder. You remember this story? Jacob has cheated his brother Esau out of his inheritance, and now he's running for his life. He's exhausted. He finds a place to sleep, which he eventually calls Bethel. Amen? It says he took a stone from that place, and he laid it down as a pillow. <laughs> Sounds like the prison I was in. <laughs> okay, stones for pillows. Yeah. Okay. Lays it down as a pillow, puts his head on it, and he has a dream. Now, in this dream, the scripture says that he saw a ladder set up on earth, and at the top of it, it reached to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending up the ladder and then descending back down on it. And then it says, and behold, the Lord stood over him and beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your forefather, and the God of Isaac. I give to you and your descendants the land on which you are lying, and your offspring shall be as countless as the dust or sand of the ground. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and by your offspring and through you shall all the families of the earth be blessed in themselves. And behold, I am with you. And we'll keep you, watch over you, take notice of you wherever you may go. And I will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done all which I have told you. So there it is, God speaking his promises over him. And when Jacob wakes up, he goes, oh my gosh, I didn't even know this is the, this is the gateway to heaven. And then he calls the place Bethel. He takes the stone, which he had as, as a pillow. He anoints it as a monument to God. And then he says he vowed a vow. He vowed to give God 10% of everything that God would give him. He vowed to give it back. So let's look at this angelic visitation. Okay, here's this ladder that comes down with the angels having a very, very strange activation. The Bible says they were ascending and then descending. Ascending and then descending. Why? You would think, well, angels are in heaven, aren't they? Wouldn't they be descending first and then ascending? Why this strange order? Why are they ascending first? Because God was there speaking promises over Jacob, and the angels were doing what angels do. They were hearkening to the voice of the Lord. The angels that were already around Jacob, how many of you know angels are already around you here on earth, hearken to God's promises that were being spoken over Jacob, descended up the ladder into heaven to get the stuff needed to make the promises come to pass and then descended back down to bring it to Jacob. See, that's why angels are around you. So when you speak, that, that's proof right there that they descended. I mean, ascended and then descended. They ascended, then descended. That means they're already down here around you. So when God speaks a promise over you, and then you repeat that promise, and you decree that promise, they will ascend up the ladder, get the stuff you need to make it happen, and then descend down the ladder and bring it to you. Sometimes I just play, when God gives me a promise, I'll play the chapter, the whole chapter that that promise is in on my audio Bible. How many of you have an audio Bible? How many of you don't? Bad people. <laughs> Go get one. It's the biggest blessing you could ever have. I'll play the promise I get from God from that chapter on repeat all night. I'll play it over myself. And while I'm asleep, just like Jacob, the angels hearken to that word being played over me. Sometimes I'll see them. I'll see them in my room. I'll see the angels like opening up a hole in, the, in my roof. And then the angels that are around me ascend up the ladder and get stuff. And they start carrying it back down and bringing it to me. You can play that chapter, Genesis 28, over yourself all night while you're sleeping. And the same thing will happen. It will open up the realm for angelic activity to happen. Did you hear what I said? Okay, now, let's go a step further. Is there a place in Scripture that actually shows this process of the angels ascending into heaven to get the stuff needed to make a promise come to pass and bringing it back down? Is there a place in scripture where it actually shows that Jacob received a manifestation of that process? Is there a place that shows that he actually got what the angels went to get? Yes. Do you remember after this, Jacob goes and he meets up with Laban. And he begins to work for Laban so he can marry his daughter, Rachel. He eventually has both Rachel and Leah as wives. And he works for Laban for many years, and Laban takes advantage of him. And he is cheated extremely. Have you read this story? Okay. So finally, Jacob gets a little tired of it. And he goes into Laban to speak and say, look, I, 
I've worked for you for years without hardly any recompense. I'm ready to take my wives and my children and leave. And Laban goes, oh, no, it's been, you can't leave. It's been shown to me by a divine, uh, the, the, the diviners, that you are the reason for my prosperity. Duh. You think? So please don't go. What do you need in order to stay? So Jacob says, okay, this is what I need. I said, he said, give me all the spotted, speckled, and streaked sheep out of the flocks as my payment, and you keep all the white sheep. And Laban agrees. But then he sends out his sons to go forward before Jacob can get back to the flock, remove all the speckled and spotted sheep, and take them out and take them far away. So when Jacob arrives at the flocks, there's only white sheep left. How many of you know that you, it's really hard to breed white sheep and get speckled and spotted sheep? In, spe, in fact, right now, speckled and spotted sheep are, are rare in Israel. Yeah, they're having a, a people that are actually, that's their ministry now, to bring back speckled and spotted sheep. So what did Jacob do? Because he just got ripped off. So what did he do? He actually received an idea in a dream. This was the idea. In this dream, he was told to take branches of almond and poplar trees and to strip them so they look speckled and spotted and streaked. And then he took those branches that looked like that and he put them in the watering tanks right in front of the area where the sheep would come to mate. So now all these white sheep would show up and they would mate in front of these speckled spotted branches and miraculously, they would produce speckled spotted sheep even though that was very, very, very difficult to do and very rare. So, wow, this means that Jacob had an idea that could change the genetics and the DNA of those sheep to cause him to be blessed. Where did he get the idea from? Let's read it. Genesis 31. And I had a dream at the time the flocks conceived... And I looked up and I saw that the rams which mated with the she-goats were streaked, speckled, and spotted. And the angel of God said to me in a dream, so who's giving him the dream? The angel, Jacob. And I said, here I am. And he said, look up and see all the rams which mate with the flock are streaked, speckled, and molded, for I have seen all that Laban does to you. Then the angel says this. Remember, he's speaking for God, the angel is. And he says this, and he tells Jacob where he came from. He says, I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar and vowed a vow. You're not getting it. This angel is saying, I'm one of the angels that was there when God spoke promises over you, and you and we, the angels, ascended up the ladder into heaven to get the stuff you needed to make the promises come to pass, and then I descended back down, and I brought you stuff, and this is one of the things I'm bringing you, a revelation, a revelation that can change the genetic makeup and DNA of white sheep so they can birth speckled and spotted sheep. <laughs> 